Hey guys, I'm gonna to talk to you today about gluten. That is a, a term that so, I, I don't know anybody that doesn't know the word or the term gluten-free. Uh, just walking in the grocery store, I've seen bananas with gluten-free on there. I've seen uh, uh, milk that says gluten-free. But the thing I want you to, I wanna talk about today is should you go gluten-free or who should be gluten-free? Number one, and number two, what the heck is gluten? How does it affect our bodies? Is it only certain people have a neg it has a negative impact on, or is it all of us? And then at what level does that affect us, and why? Or, or, or why does that affect us? Why is it a negative thing to our health? So let's start with just talking right now again about becoming gluten or what gluten actually is. Okay, so gluten is actually a, a mixture of proteins. And uh, gliadin is actually the main one that has been studied, but it's a mixture of proteins. And it's a really hard, it's in a lot of uh, wheat products. It's really hard to be broken down in our bodies. It's, a, it's that gluey substance that kind of like when we make bread, the gluten is what makes it kind of gluey. And whenever you try to make breads without gluten, you notice that it's, it just falls apart and becomes crumbly and things like that. And because that gluten is like literally a glue, and that's kind of where they got the name from. And so it's really hard for our body to actually digest gluten. Okay, now, if you're someone that's gone gluten-free, many times you've done that because maybe you got diagnosed with something called celiac disease. Maybe you just heard the gluten was bad for you, so you thought it was a good idea to change that. And so celiac disease, I wanna talk about that for a second. Celiac disease is actually the only autoimmune disease that we, we actually know what the trigger is. Does that, you see what I'm saying there? So there's so many autoimmune diseases out there, but we know that gluten is the one thing that uh, will cause that, uh, that process of an autoimmune process in our body. And a lot of times I've had patients that uh, do, do bad with gluten, they've taken it out, they do better, and then they go to their doctor to get a celiac test, and they do a, a genetic test, they also do an, an immune system test, and it's been negative for celiacs. And, and the reason it became negative is if you haven't had gluten in a certain period of time, when you get that test, it's gonna say it's negative. It doesn't mean you're okay with gluten, okay? So gluten in general is something that is very hard for a body to digest. Whether you're someone diagnosed with celiac disease or whether you're everyday Joe and you're just wondering if you should go gluten-free. So the answer on who should go gluten-free everybody should go gluten-free. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly why, so by the end of this video, you're gonna understand why you need to go gluten-free and why that is so incredibly important to our health. It affects everything, not just uh, some inflammation or some tiredness or some fatigue when you eat it, okay? It's a big deal. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about when it comes to gluten is that gluten-free products doesn't mean healthy product either, okay? So I'm gonna to talk to you about removing gluten. I'm not telling you to go to the grocery store and just anything that says gluten-free is now healthy for you. You also, many times they'll put gluten-free on products just because there's no gluten. And it also, if you actually go on the Celiac, uh, I think it's the Celiac Foundation uh, website, uh, if you go on there, they actually say that just because it says gluten-free doesn't mean there's no gluten protein at all in there. So you can still, if you're celiac, have celiac issues, you can still get inflammation from it. However, gluten-free, there can be tons of other chemicals, tons of other sugars, tons of other bad foods in that gluten-free food. So just because it says gluten-free, again, don't mean does not mean it's healthy okay so don't be tricked by that marketing tool but gluten is definitely something we want to get rid of and here's why so number one again everyone we want to get rid of it secondly is is the thing i want to talk about is um when it comes to gluten a lot of people would say well you know wheat's been around forever and this gluten-free thing is new you know i think the gluten-free term from the fda was in the i think in the uh, 2000 I wanna say 2007, I think it was, is when they started to actually coin that term. It might be a little bit later than that, um, but they started to coin the term, and I mean like they had regulations on how someone could put something as gluten-free. So that seems like it's a pretty new thing that we've been dealing with. But the truth is, actually inflammation in the gut from wheat and gluten isn't a new thing. I have, I have uh, uh, the, the studies back all the way back to, I think, 52 AD, um, when uh, doctors were talking about, they used to call it uh, problems with the gut, and later it was coined. Uh, it was coined celiac disease, and that's been around forever. And actually, in in uh, World War II, the end of World War II is where we really started to understand that it was happening from wheat. And the reason this happened, it was a doctor that was tr taking care of all these kids that would have you know, and, and, and patients that would have these really extended bellies. That that kind of extended belly, skinny legs, was the kind of the old way of saying, okay, that person is has celiac disease. But the reason they found out, or how they found out that that was coming specifically from wheat, is in World War II they had to have wheat rations. And when they rationed that wheat and started taking people off of wheat, they started to get better. And they actually used to call these kids, they would call them banana babies. 
believe it or not, because they would actually feed them bananas. That's all they would give them was bananas, and they would get better. They wouldn't eat anything else but bananas. And the reason they got better is because they took wheat out, not because they should be on a diet of just bananas. But the, the point is, is that that was all linked back to wheat. So we know wheat has been a problem in our diet for many years. Now, the wheat we ate 50 years ago is different than the, even the wheat we eat today. It's genetically changing so quickly, and many, many reasons is because they're genetically changing it to um, be able to handle pesticides and things like that and be able to live longer in our environment for farmers to you know, be able to create crops better, right? So right now, there's multiple different genetic makeups in different types of gluten. If you actually research this, you'll see that the gluten, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, in, in different types of wheat, the wheat you eat in one product might be different than the wheat you eat in another product. So our body just doesn't understand this whole crazy genetic makeup that's happened, this genetically modified wheat, and it's really hard for our body to break down. And so our body can't digest gluten. Okay, I've said that a few times. So I don't care if you're the healthiest feeling person in the world, you shouldn't be eating gluten because your body's not digesting it. Here's what actually happens is our body actually sees gluten as an infection. It's almost like we get an infection in our gut and our body start, actually creates an immune response to it. This is wild. So the gluten comes in and our body sees that as an infection, an foreign invader. It doesn't want it to be there, so it'll create an immune response. Part of that immune response is something called zonulin. Now zonulin, if you Google zonulin, you're gonna, that actually a blood test we can do to see if someone is really, uh, has too much gluten and if they're really allergic to it and, and high levels allergic to it or celiac disease. You can do a zonulin blood test. If there's high levels of that, that tells us they need to stop immediately, stop eating gluten. But it creates an infection in our so our body creates an immune response. Zonulin is one of the things that gets released, and that zonulin actually goes to the cell walls in the, in the gut. It goes to our epithelial tissue and, and causes those cells to constrict and open up the cell lining. That's the junctions between the two cells in our cell lining. So our, our gut is actually a very small one layer epithelial layer, very thin, thinner than our skin actually. And when those cells start to open up, it creates what they call a gap or uh, tight junctions become gaps and allows, allows proteins into the gut. I'm sorry, into the bloodstream. So let me just say that again. Gluten releases zonulin, causes zonulin to release. Zonulin permeates our gut lining. It's called gut permeability or leaky gut. Okay, I'm gonna talk about leaky gut here in a second. That gut permeability now lets the proteins on, or, uh, of gluten gets into the bloodstream and it's a chronic immune response. It also lets other things into the bloodstream because gut permeability now lets other food proteins into the bloodstream that haven't been broken down. It can let viruses, it can let bacteria into the bloodstream. And so they've actually shown, and I have a huge study here and I've, I've been looking study after study on this. And you know, I've had patients, our, our doctors tell their patients who have come to me to say, and, they, and the doctor says, there's no such thing as leaky gut. I, I, I'm so tired of hearing there's no such thing as leaky gut. It's all over the medical research. They call it gut permeability. They call it leaky gut. But ultimately, there's a huge such thing as leaky gut. It's when, you're, when your tight junctions open up and allow permeability of the gut lining. Now we should have some permeability. That's where how we get nutrients and minerals in, but our gut lining should be deciding what's let in and what's let out. The reason zonulin's released to open up that gut lining is to flush everything out because we think we have an infection. Okay? So that's that's kind of what happens there. But this article right here, this is from Frontiers in Immunology. This is May 2017. Um, for those of you whose doctor tells you um, leaky gut doesn't exist, this title is Leaky Gut as Danger as a Danger Signal for Autoimmune Disease. This was edited um, at the University of South Florida. It was reviewed by uh, a guy at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, so I can go over and over again of different medical studies that talk about leaky gut and how it affects you. So it, it is a real thing. Now there's a lot of confusion and we're learning a lot about leaky gut. No one knows everything about it at this point, but it does exist, okay? So if you go to your doctor and you're like, oh, leaky gut doesn't exist, find yourself a new doctor. He hasn't been doing his research. Permeability of the gut is a very, very real and um, thing, a very real thing that we need to look at. The one of the reasons we do food allergy testing in our office is because of gut permeability. If someone has a ton of food allergies, it tells us they have a lot of gut permeability. Okay, now the reason gluten is such a big deal to everybody is for every single one of us that eats gluten, it creates more gut permeability. That process I just talked about, that infection, you don't have to have some sort of allergen to gluten in order for that to happen. That happens to all of us. Now, our gut becomes more permeable, which makes us more likely to become, um, to create antibodies to other foods. You're gonna create more antibodies to the foods you eat the most. So the, most, the foods that are most often in our um, diet 
are the ones that are most in our food chain. So we have wheat, we have uh, corn, we have dairy, we have uh, soy, and um, eggs. Those are some of the most common foods you're gonna find in almost everything, and so that's why those are some of the highest allergen foods, okay? The protein gets into our bloodstream, our body creates an IgG immune response, creates antibodies so that it's ready for the next time that gets into our bloodstream. In other words, a food allergy is a chronic infection in your body. Your body's constantly creating an immune response. The reason this is so important, if you're eating gluten every single day and you have these food allergies that you're eating every single day, your body is in a constant immune response. If you're in a constant immune response, that's called a chronic infection. A chronic infection, we talked about this in a few videos past, but a chronic infection is one of the main things that will lead to cancer down the road because it weakens the overall immune response in your body. That's huge. So eating gluten can actually lead to cancer. Eating gluten can, will create, it creates inflammation in your body so you become inflamed just by eating gluten. So if you're someone with symptoms, whether it's pain like back pain, whether it's digestive symptoms like constipation or diarrhea or bloating, whether it's headaches, uh, whether it's uh, allergies or skin issues like eczema, psoriasis, number one, first step, simplest thing you can possibly do in terms of not having to spend extra money or testing is just take gluten out right off the bat. Just make that decision. Nothing with gluten in it, but then also go clean on your eating. So this study, I want uh, this, uh, this isn't actually a study. This is a whole layout of all the research that they've done over the years and laying it out. And there's one of the things I just wanted to say on it. It says, I'm just going to read some of this real quick because I want to kind of pinpoint that this is a real deal. And this is just the introduction. For digestion and absorption purposes, mammals have developed a very complicated and highly specialized GI system maintained by the mucosal barrier. However, a part of Apart from absorbable nutrients, the intestinal mucosa also faces tremendous exterior antigens, including food antigens, commensal bacteria, pathogens, and toxins. Thus, a specialized barrier function is required to block the entry of diverse exterior antigens while absorbing nutrients. In other words, we have a barrier to um, block all the things we don't want to get into our bloodstream and allow the good things to come in, like nutrients and minerals, okay? Impressively, in the intestine, the front line of this barrier is maintained by only a single layer of epithelial tissue. So it's a single, very thin layer in our, in our intestines, okay? Um, and these are linked together by tight junctions. These are those tight cellular junctions that doesn't let the things we don't want in. And many other factors aid in support of this barrier, including muc mucins, so your mucos mucosa. Hey guys, one of the things that a lot of people are dealing with right now, uh, digestive system wise, is their goblet cells aren't producing mucus properly, and they have a very weak mucosal lining. That mucosa is very important. It, says, it talks about this. That muc mucus is very important for antimicrobial molecules. Those are a part of that gut lining. So a good healthy mucus lining, a good healthy layer of um, antimicrobials uh, is important. And then it says all here is immunoglobulins and also cytokines. That mucosa lining helps store all that and that's our defense system from what we eat and our body meaning keeping the bad stuff out, letting the good stuff in. Those are very important. That's why we're talking, you hear people talking about probiotics all the time, but hey, if you don't have a good mucosal lining, your probiotics aren't doing anything. They're not gonna stay there. You're just taking like, some expensive probiotics. So we have to work on that mucosal lining. One of the best things you can do, one of the, some of the stuff that causes a weak mucosal lining is eating gluten, but also other food allergies, also inflammatory foods. So always look back to that anti-inflammatory diet that we talk about but also stress, just emotional stresses will do that. Same thing it talks about, toxins will actually break that down. And then the final thing that you, and, and, and so all those things happen. Other stuff that's gonna do it is antibiotic use. That's a big one. So if you're eating gluten while you're taking antibiotics, you're setting yourself up for autoimmune issues. We're gonna talk autoimmune here in a second. Okay, so you have this weak permeability, or this permeability to the gut, okay? Chamomile, by the way, is something you can take that helps that mucosal lining. Um, so you have permeability, okay? If any abnormalities occur among these factors, the intestinal permeability may increase, which is termed a leaky gut. For all these that say a leaky gut doesn't exist, it is gut permeability, intestinal permeability, it's all over the medical research. A leaky gut, all, all, I'm sorry, a leaky gut allows the entry of exterior antigens from the gut lumen in the host, which may promote both local and systemic immune responses. Multiple disease may, diseases may arise or be exacerbated due to a leaky gut, including autoimmune diseases, such as um, inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, autoimmune hepatitis, type one diabetes, multiple sclerosis, systemic lupus. Numerous factors can affect gut permeability, such as various diets derived compounds, right? Foods that you eat, alcohol consumption, 
gut microbiota dysbiosis, so bacterial infections. One of the reasons we do a stool test for a lot of our patients, if we see any inflammation in the gut on x-rays or they just tell us they have symptoms, is to see if there's any dysbiosis, any bacterial infections or even pa uh, parasite infections or even yeast buildup. So that's very important. While the review is focused on chronic inflammation in gut barrier functions in mammals, it is worth noting that leaky gut is a phenomenon that is widespread in both mammalian and non-mammalian animals. Pretty cool, isn't it? So guess what else is a mammal? Your dog, and we're feeding it junk too and antibiotics, and they go to a, a vet from day one, and they have leaky gut issues too. So you can take everything I'm saying and use it for your animals. But the point of the matter is, is that leaky gut is very real. Gut permeability comes from those things that I just talked about. Autoimmune diseases many, most of the time will stem from a leaky gut issue, a gut permeability problem. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, okay, well, I got a leaky gut. Oh, I, got a, I saw a video and this guy was promoting a leaky gut supplement. I'm going to go get, take that leaky gut supplement. It sounded really good. Here's the problem. There is no leaky gut supplement. In other words, there's not one thing that you can take that's going to get rid of your leaky gut. There is actually a different things you need to do based on what you're dealing with to get rid of your leaky gut. In other words, if you have dysbiotic uh, a, a, or a bacterial infection in your gut, that could be multiple different bacteria. We need to address which bacteria that is, start to kill that off to get rid of that stressor. If you're taking a, a leaky gut supplement, but you're eating food allergies, well, you're consistently inflaming your gut, so you're not gonna heal your gut. If you're eating gluten and taking a leaky gut uh, supplement, it's not gonna do anything for you. So there's no supplement on its own that you can just take that's going to heal your leaky gut, okay? However, there are so many things you can do to start to get the stressors out of your digestive system by getting rid of infections, by getting rid of food allergies, by changing and eating an anti-inflammatory diet, including not eating those food allergies, and now start to do things that heal the gut. Start to increase the mucosal lining of the gut by taking something like chamomile. That's a great thing to do. Organ grape is also a really good one as well. Now, I'm not telling you to go get these things. I'm, again, I'm recommending you get tested first so you actually know if that's something you need. But chamomile at a high dose, organ grape can be very good for that as well. But these help uh, that mucosal lining, they help the gut lining uh, heal. There's also something called gut ion. It's a, it's a supplement we can take to help heal the leaky gut and bring those cells back together and get rid of that influx. But if you're constantly eating foods that are causing it, all those supplements don't matter. That's the truth. And everybody comes in and they want the supplement. The supplement is secondary to the lifestyle change. So getting gluten out of your diet is that very first lifestyle change. Now let's talk autoimmune. So that leaky gut happens, now proteins get into the bloodstream, enough antibody creation, and now you start to have cells attacking organ systems, meaning you got antibodies in your thyroid, you get Hashimoto's or hypo and thyroiditis, right? You get inflammation in your thyroid and your body starts attacking this thyroid. That stems many times from a leaky gut. So if somebody comes in with hypothyroidism or uh, Hashimoto's disease or any autoimmune issue, the first test I do is stool test. Food allergy and stool test. Let's get food allergies out. Let's look at what the digestive system looks like. Okay, so if you're someone with an autoimmune disease and you've never had a stool test, we gotta start there. We gotta figure out why your body is creating that autoimmune response. You can take any medication you want to reduce inflammation, but that's only gonna make you feel better possibly. Many times it doesn't even do that for a short period of time. It's not going to get to the fact that your body's in a constant immune response. You're just blocking your immune system with an anti-inflammatory, which means you're blocking your immune system. That's a bad thing, okay? so. Other autoimmune things like type 1 diabetes. So how does, you know, I've, I've, I've talked a lot about um, how autoimmune diseases can stem from things like aluminum, right? And, and like things from in our vaccines that will create this huge antibody response. Well, part of it is it creates the antibody response, plus we have a leaky gut and it's a chronic inflammation attack in the body. The other part is, is when you put aluminum into the body, it goes through the liver. The liver tries to get rid of it right? And as our liver gets rid of it, it's going to dump it into the gut and that can go stem back into the bloodstream through a leaky gut. So that's huge. Autoimmune issues. If you have an autoimmune disease, testing right off the bat, let's get you a stool test. Let's see what's happening in your gut. Let's do a, a food allergy test to get food allergies out. I have eczema, psoriasis, those things. Food allergy testing is huge. We've had so many patients just get rid of their food allergies and eczema and psoriasis go away. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's your gut permeability, autoimmune. That's really the big picture of gluten, guys, is that no one should be eating it. Do everything you can to avoid it. And this one, I'm, actually, I'm gonna give you a side note. This one, for um, a lot of people, is hard because it's in a lot of like the alcohols that we drink, like beer. 
So a beer that you can drink that actually doesn't have a lot of the yeast issues that most beers do and are a lot of the gluten issues that most beers do, not necessarily gluten-free beer, you can do that, but if you wanna have just regular beer, you wanna follow beers that um, follow the German uh, purity law. I think it's 1516 purity law, and they actually are very clean for our bodies and, we, and it's not as uh, intense on our digestive system. Okay, so that's your bonus note there if you're someone that's trying to get rid of gluten but you still wanna have some beers every so often or something like that. But again, I would say reduce gluten as much as possible. Hey, if you're a mom or a dad listening and your kids have a, a belly that kind of sticks out a lot, take gluten out. After that, take dairy out. After that, take corn out, take soy out. Those are some of the things that are gonna cause that. We have actually have a, a friend who similar, their daughter, now that I look back at it, you know, I, I wasn't judging their daughter or t- taking care of them or anything, just friends that I'd, I'd known. And now I look back at their daughter, she had this belly and she's skinny legs and this big belly and they took gluten out and all of her problems went away like all the health issues she had all these other things just completely disappeared just by taking gluten out so that's a game changer for a lot of people don't flirt with bread hey if, if it's like i just can't get rid of bread come on it's freaking bread sorry but it is like i i get it i used to eat a stack of peanut butter sandwiches of wonder bread um all, every day like that was my diet as i'd eat wonder bread peanut butter sandwiches like every day. So I get the the addiction to it. I also get the addiction to want to have a beer all the time. I get that. But you have to make a decision. Like, is it worth inflaming your gut, causing you to be tired all the time, possibly causing you to over time by doing that to have an autoimmune issue, which is miserable. If you know someone with an autoimmune disease, you know, that's miserable. Or is it, is it worth leading to something like cancer, right? Just for bread. It's just bread. You know, I have friends that like they do everything right, they eat healthy, but then they still eat bread. I'm like, why are you eating? And there, it, here's the cool news. There's breads out there that don't have gluten in there that are healthier for you. So you can have those. But again, a lot of people just love gluten because it has that gooey, sticky thing to it. Uh, actually, side note, cassava is actually a really good flour you can use that still has a little bit of that in there and is easier for our bodies to digest. So use the cassava uh, flour instead. All right. Hey, guys, I hope that was uh, educating for you. I hope you got a lot out of that. Please join this mission with us to help meet more people. If, if there's doctors out there telling people that leaky gut doesn't exist, I mean, come on. They, 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 people see their medical doctor as a social authority. And I'll just tell you right now that they, many of them have no clue what they're talking about when it comes to health. They simply understand, here's a symptom, here's a blood test, here's the medication I'm supposed to give you for it, and that's it. They really don't understand the human body. If your doctor isn't critically thinking his way individually with you, spending the time with you to find out what's happening in your body, questioning and answering, going through testing with you, finding out what is actually specifically happening to you, and he's just saying, okay, oh, you have this, take this, find yourself a new doctor because he's not critically thinking and he's not working for you, he's working for himself. It's a pride in thinking he knows everything. And the truth is, when someone comes into our office, it's a clean slate. We're gonna start investigating. I'm gonna start researching. There's some things I don't know. I'll have to keep looking. I'll get on the phone with other doctors to find out if we what I need to do for this person because it's a clean slate. Everybody's different in every situation. I've had two patients with the same exact symptoms, the same exact diagnosis. One gets better quickly with a protocol that we did for them. The other one with a similar protocol doesn't see any change at all because everybody is an individual and there's no protocol. That's why I'm not giving you a protocol for celiac or gluten sensitivities or anything like that because it's not the same for everybody because you're not only having a gluten issue, you're probably also having a spinal issue. You're probably also having a stress issue. You're probably also around too many chemicals and everybody's different on that level of their life. So we have to address that individually. Cool. So if that connects with you, make sure you connect with us. You can message us. You can go on queencityhealthcenter.com. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about shifting your thinking. Hopefully this video shifts your thinking so you can shift your health. You guys have an awesome day.